kind, caring words that we never heard from Joe in regard to the crack epidemic that destroyed black communities, okay? In fact, Joe was responsible for the drug laws that put so many black people in jail for smoking rock, just like his son. This video is brought to you by The Greatest Lie Ever Sold. The Greatest Lie Ever Sold, Candace Owens' new documentary. My God, you gotta look at it. I know y'all remember Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah not, not, not the movement, but the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. It literally came out of nowhere, used George Floyd, raised over $90 million, and black folks didn't get nothing from it. Do y'all remember BLM co-founder Patrice Cullors? Remember she stepped down and multiple states barred Cullors from fundraising. And that's why this documentary is so important. So many people need to hear the truth. Candace Owens went ham. She came out and exposed where the money went, where the money didn't go. And I need you to go and check out this documentary. You will not be disappointed. The coldest documentary exposing Black Lives Matter that I have ever seen. Go to Daily Wire Plus, which is a Daily Wire Plus exclusive. But go to dailywire.com slash Tatum and become a member today. That's dailywire.com slash Tatum. Download the documentary. The links are in the description section. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get a notification anytime I go live or make a video. Make sure you still subscribe to this channel. Like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Let's get into this. I want to bring up this dude, Charlemagne the Fraud. Um, I'm not going to call him what his real name is because there's only one God. Um, and it ain't Charlemagne. So anyway, Charlemagne slams Joe Biden for defending Hunter, choosing to lock up uh, black folks instead of his own son. So if you don't know who Charlemagne is, Charlemagne, black guy, he's, you know, he's on Breakfast Club. I mean, he's pretty much the popular because of that. And he's known for the Breakfast Club uh, radio show. Uh, they they all, I mean, I, I can't say every single person they bring on there is whack or whatever, but for the most part, it's a bunch of black people talking in a circle, and all of them are liberal, and they have no, they have no connection. I think with with a broader perspective, all they do is bash Republicans. They won't bring they won't bring conservatives on. There's no way that Breakfast Club will have me on there. They just won't. They they messed around and had this this girl named Angela Stanton, which she's a fraud in my opinion, but she she at least did really good when she went on there. They had this this girl named Angela Stanton on there. And she, she just destroyed them when it came to abortions. She destroyed them. They didn't know what to think. They couldn't even talk. And the thing is, she was a girl, so it was hard for the dudes to say anything to her. And the girls couldn't say nothing to her because I believe all women and all this old uh, liberal stuff that they push, they couldn't say nothing to her. She was just eating them alive. Anyway, I got a clip of with Charlemagne, and uh, he was referring to the comments that was made by Joe Biden, uh, who was actually defending his son. And everybody knows his son is a crackhead. Um, but you know, somehow he's glad that he recovered, but he didn't care about that when he was pushing legislation to lock up people for crack, co crack cocaine. So I'll start with the clip for Joe Biden on Jake Tapper, um, and then we'll play what Charlemagne said. Roll the first clip. The prosecutors think they could, they have enough to charge your son Hunter uh, for tax crimes and a false statement about a gun purchase. Um, personally and politically, um, how do you react to that? Well, first of all, I, I'm, I'm proud of my son. This is a kid who got, uh, not a kid, he's a grown man. He got uh, hooked on, uh, uh, like many families have had happen, hooked on drugs. Uh, he's overcome that. He's established a new life. Oh, you ain't catching no crackhead. So, so I'm confused. He's overcome that. Maybe these laptop videos are old. But I could have sworn these laptop videos were new. They extracted videos from that. He's snorting coke off of prostitutes on the laptop. This was like... I think a few years ago, or even is current as last year. I, that's what I that's what I perceive it to be. I think these are new videos that he took. But anyway, Charlemagne was was upset with him because you know the ninety four crime bill and other legislation that was pushed by Democrats to to fight uh, this anti gun movement, the war on drugs, and all of this other stuff they were pushing. Now, I, and then listen, I don't have a problem with it. I know that it disproportionately affected black folks, but I don't have a problem with the sentiment of trying to get drugs off the streets. You know, the funny thing here, and I'll play Charlemagne's clip, but the interesting concept here is that it's weird that people think that it's wrong to arrest people for using drugs or being a part of this drug enterprise. It's not wrong. We can go back and look and say, hey, it disproportionately affected black people. How do we make sure that there's not some disproportionality that, that is a result of a law that we've implemented? 
But it's not reasonable to say, oh, because black people went to jail because they were the ones hooked on crack that us trying to eliminate the crack epidemic is somehow a bad thing. We should arrest people. We should get drugs off the streets. Because now, what y'all got? Now the drugs is running rampant in the community and everybody dying and you mad at the government because they won't do nothing. So what, make your mind up. All right, we got Charlemagne. This is what Charlemagne said in his clip. Now, before we go, I'd like to remind everyone that crack is still whack, okay? But it's also best friends with the president's son, all right? Now, the other day, President Joe Biden went on Jake Tapper and said this when he was asked about the prospect of Hunter going to prison. I'm proud of my son. He got uh, hooked on, uh, uh, like many families have had happen, hooked on drugs. Uh, He's overcome that. He's established a new life. Kind, caring words that we never heard from Joe in regard to the crack epidemic that destroyed black communities, okay? In fact, Joe was responsible for the drug laws that put so many black people in jail for smoking rock, just like his son. So, Joe, now you know how so many other parents felt when their child was battling addiction. But with the legislation you created, the Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 86 and 88, you chose to get them locked up instead of getting them help. So... All right, all right. I understand your empathy. I'm done with him. You know, this is what bothers me about black folks. You know, I got to get on you now. Because, you know, it's funny because they say, Joe Biden locked up black people. Joe Biden and and the crack epidemic that affected so many families. Bro, you ain't talking about the people who were selling the dope, are you? What about them? You ain't mad at them. You got them coming in your studio and you're interviewing them. You revering them as, as celebrities. And they selling dope to our people. So outside of getting arrested in, while in possession of crack cocaine, what about the people who are selling it to our people? The, the crack cocaine epidemic wasn't, wasn't because the government was, was selling it to, to Ray Ray now. It was because black men decided to profit off of selling dope to their own people. Why, can, why can't we not be clear about this? I get it. The government laws were disproportionately affecting black men. But we were selling it to our own people. And people say the CIA set it up in a black community. You have to ask yourself this question. Why did they set up in a black community and not the Asian community? Hmm? Why not the Jewish community? The Muslim community? The Hispanic community? Why, why, why didn't they do it? Because they weren't susceptible like we were. They, would, they wouldn't be willing to sell their own people out for some money, some Jordans, fame, women. We were. Can, can we admit to that? Don't get mad at Brandon Tatum. Just admit to it. You got to call, call it for what it is. We hated our own people enough that we were willing to exploit our own people and make money off of it and then rap about it. And then we buy the music of rappers rapping about how they destroyed our own community. How many people you think the police killed in the crack cocaine epidemic versus the crack dealer? Tell me. Come on. Run it up. How many crackheads you think witnessed death or experienced death at the hands of ODing versus them actually going to jail for being in possession of crack cocaine? You rarely go to jail for being in possession of drugs. And you, and you really don't do no real time. You tell me. Was ODing a problem or, or being incarcerated for the user? Not the dealer, the user. Facts do not lie. And facts don't care about your feelings. I know some of my family members who have been high on that stuff. The government had nothing to do with that. It's that other brothers in our community do not care enough about their own community or their people. They are willing to sell dope to them, to watch them become zombies, and they live a a lavish life. I'm going to give you an example. I only got a couple minutes left. I remember the first time I saw somebody smoke crack, I'd never, uh, let me let me put it this way, because I got to give the context. There was a car wash on Ramey, right down the street from Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School, where I went to school at. Crackheads, they'll wash a car for like $5, $10. They'll do a whole detail for like $20. I'm talking about detail, stuff that you pay $150, $200 for. They'll do it. I don't know how they then rigged up the car wash. They put some coins in there, and then they be able to wash a car. The dope boys go up to that car wash with their cars, jewelry, flashing, all of this, and they let the crackheads wash their car for money or crack. This is what they do. They're out there flooding. They're out there flossing. Everybody love them at the, at the behest, at the, at the detriment of other black men who were fathers, brothers, sons, 
and they, they let them go by the wayside because they want to floss. And, and, and we don't have a problem with it. I went to get my car washed. I knew they were crackheads, but I didn't, you know, I wasn't going to give them no crack. I just give them a little money and they do it. But then I paid them the money. I drive around the back because you got to go around and loop through the front. And I saw a dude back there smoking crack. I had never seen somebody actually smoke crack before. And that at, at, at that moment, I realized that I was contributing to the downfall of my own people. That money I gave to wash my car was that what probably was that man taking that crack in that pipe and smoking himself to death. And we, t- we keep being and complaining about the government. Why don't we talk about our own people? Because they still selling drugs today. How do you think fentanyl getting out? The government ain't giving out fentanyl. No, other, other people are saying, I could make $50, $100, $200 on selling this fentanyl to this person, and if they die, I don't care. And they just selling it like it's candy. They got a whole bag of fentanyl. Selling it to their own people. Destroying their own communities. Has nothing to do with the government. Majority of it is y'all hurting your own people and rapping about it and making millions rapping about it. It's, it's a shame. I wish people would keep it real. Uh-huh.